So what I want to do today, um, I want to go part two on No More Silence. And uh, last week, uh, I, I want to thank this house publicly, open right now, even on Facebook. Man, I, I got uh, no hail last week as far as this church goes. Uh, and I want to say thank you all for loving God. Thank you all for loving his word of God. Thank you all for standing on truth. Thank you all for supporting the word of God. And it means a lot to me to be your pastor. And because uh, I know, again, I'm going to say it again, as for me in this house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Somebody give God praise one more time. Amen. No more silence. Come on, no more silence. You ever turn to your neighbors and tell them, no more silence. Come on, tell somebody, no more silence. Yeah, God gave me a mouth, and I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to give him praise this morning. No more silence. And I'm going to declare it today. We're going to change South Central. We're going to change. Christians are going to rise up, and we're going to take back this nation. I need somebody to believe with me this morning. You say, Brian, you're all about that. Yes, 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 yes. I'm tired of the devil. Oh, thief. Steal, kill, and destroy. And my God, he gives me life and gives me more life abundant. Greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. If God be for me, who can be against me? I am the head and I'm not the tail. He I bless me going in and I'll bless you coming out. I'll bless you in the field and I'll bless you in the city. I'll bless you wherever you at. And we got a God. It's time for the church to stand up and speak up. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. I ain't, I, I ain't backing down no more. I'm not backing. You say, Brian, listen, we ain't going to be mean about it, but we're going to stand up. We're going to stand up. You say, Brian, I see something different on you. Yeah, I finally believe God's sovereign. I preached it for years. Stood behind this pulpit and said, God's sovereign, God's sovereign. How many of you know it's easy until you're into a conflict or a battle or things are not going the way that you think they need to be going. But you look up and say, I believe God's sovereign. That means this, God is in control. <laughs> Come on, somebody. How many of y'all believe God's sovereign? Well, why are you up in panic mode then? How come you're wigged out? I'm just, I'm being honest with y'all. That ain't my sermon. Y'all get that for free today. Everybody say, no more silence. In Nehemiah chapter 1, I'm ready to preach. In Nehemiah chapter 1, the Bible says these words. And I said this last week. I'm going to preach it again this week. No more silence, part two. Nehemiah chapter 1, the Bible says, Here stood a great city. A great city. That was destroyed by silence. Here stood a great church that God has hands upon. Here stood a great nation. Here stood a great marriage. Here stood a great home. Here stood a great man of God, a great woman of God, but they were destroyed because of silence. So here's what I've learned over the years. If y'all will bear with me, I'm not going to be long. I don't think. I like just saying that. But here's what I've learned over the years. Listen to me. Y'all lean in. Not to speak is to speak. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. Not to vote, is to vote. I'm preaching better than y'all acting. Silence will destroy a great city. Silence, if you sit down and you say, here's the deal, if you don't vote, you ain't got no say. You ain't got no say. I'm telling y'all, there's enough Christians in the United States of America that we can take back this, this town, this city, this nation, this world for Jesus Christ, but we've got to vote. You say, Brian, why are you talking like that? Because 25 million Christians don't vote. 25 million, y'all realize, add 25 million to that. We'll win every time. We'll win every single time. No more Silence. I declare today, no, I can't get this out of my spirit. I've tried to run from it. I can't get it out. I can't get away from it. And I need you to lean in and listen. Because listen, if America, if, I mean, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, y'all, if, if, everybody say if. If is a conditional promise. If you do this, I'll do that. If you do this, I'll do that. God says, listen, 
He get, how many of y'all know free will is a beautiful thing? But how many of you know free will will also send you to hell? Free will, even though it's a beautiful thing, free will can also be a dangerous thing. So listen to this. I'm going to read something to you. Because the Christians in the church was silent. How many of you know there was a consequence? Watch this. If you act like a fool, there's going to be some foolish consequences. If you live wrong, I don't care who you are, how anointed, watch, your anointing will only take you so far. Your anointing will only take you so far. But I'm telling you this, America, if America and Christians remain silent, there is a consequence. And I want to give this to you straight out of the Bible. That way, Rafferty's out. I'm out. And I can give you a word straight from the Bible, but Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 through 19, is where I want to take this. And I know some of you are sitting there going, Brian, that's Old Testament. Old Testament is the schoolmaster of the New Testament. You wouldn't have the New Testament if you didn't have the Old Testament. They feed off each other. You can read something in Revelation, and Genesis will back it up. They go together. You can't separate them. You can't separate them. So here it is, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 through 19, reading out the NIV, and I speak this over us because listen to me, there, there's a consequence. If, everybody say if. Yeah. Now watch this, here's not, here's not a, a if. Jesus Christ is coming back. Could be today. Could be here in about 30 seconds. Are you ready? You say, Brian, you really for real? I am for real. Jesus Christ could come back at any God-given moment. I'm ready. How many of y'all ready? How many's going out on the first load? Huh? Come on now. If your hand's not up, I'm serious. If your hand's not up, I'm concerned about you. Because if you won't raise it in church, this is a place, man, that you ought to be as free, as free, as free, as free. Now, when we walk out that door, that's when hell's waiting for you. But you better get your praise on in church. If you can't praise him here, I know you sure won't praise him anywhere else. All right, let me go on. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 through 19, NIV. This, listen, this is what the Lord says. How many of you know if God says it, it's worth listening to? This is what thus saith the Lord. You stand at the crossroads. Woo, woo, I can stop right. I wanted to preach, stop right there. Stand at the crossroads and look. As for the ancient paths, as where the good way is, the good way, as, as where the good things are. And walk in it. And you will find rest for your souls. I could stop right there and preach and teach on a Wednesday night forever. Some of you are wrestling in your souls because you're not obeying what God is telling you to obey. If you don't have rest, listen to me. If we don't have rest, we're not obeying what God told us to obey. I didn't write it. Is. But you said, watch what he says. We will not walk in it. I appointed a watchman over you, and you said, listen to the sound of the trumpet. My, my, my. But you said, we will not listen. Whew. Therefore, hear you nations, you congregations, you who are, who are my witnesses. I'm a witness. Observe what will happen to them. Hear you, O earth. I am bringing disaster on this people. The fruit of their schemes. Oh, my God. Because they have not listened to my words. They have rejected my word, my law, or my commandments. Listen to me. America, right now, is at a crossroads. I believe this was all my heart. And I felt in my spirit today, God says, Brian, today, you become the watchman. Today, you become the watchman and you sound the trumpet. You sound the alarm. And you tell everyone, we better, listen to me, you better wake up. Church, listen, I, I can preach it. I'll preach it anywhere, but I'm telling you, this is a good house right here. We better wake up. God said in his holy word, church, America, you're at a crossroads. And God said these words, it's simple. Choose the ancient past. The forefathers, the Abraham, the Isaac, and the Jacobs, the ones who followed the word of God, who wasn't afraid to sacrifice, who wasn't afraid to stand up. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got through in the fiery furnace, you know why they got through in the fiery furnace? Let me give y'all just a quick teaching, a quick word real fast. The whole nation was to bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar. They said, you bow down. And there was three little Hebrew boys. I love this, hallelujah. 
Everybody else was bowing down, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood up. Hallelujah. They said, I'm not bowing down to a king. I'm not bowing down to a priest. I'm not bowing down to a government. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. We got to stand up. We got to wake up. So they got through in the fiery furnace because why? They didn't bow down. So don't let it shock y'all if some of y'all get thrown into the fiery furnace. Don't let it shock y'all if some of y'all get thrown up in the lion's den. Don't let it shock y'all if the pastor ends up in jail. Don't let it shock y'all. Why? Because I'm telling you, if we don't bow down to the government, the government will try to throw you in the fire. That's the word of God. You can say what you want to say. You can say what you want to say. We better wake up. We be he said, you better choose good ways. Not your way, good ways. You choose righteousness, choose life, choose to walk in it. But listen to this, the people's response. If I've ever seen America, if I've ever seen the church house, here's what the people's response, God says, hold up, I'm telling you, wake up. Choose righteousness, choose the good ways, choose life, and listen to the people's response. I will not listen or walk in it. That's, that's what he said. I won't listen, and I'm not going to walk in it. You know every time the Bible says that you know to do right and you do wrong, that is sin? This, is, this may be some old school preaching, but we need to hear it. <laughs> he said these words, do what I've told you to do. And if I'm for you, I don't care if 450 prophets of Baal come up against you. I've got you. But you listen, if you want the Bible blessings, you've got to do it the Bible way. If you want God to bless you and your household, you've got to follow his commands. I never thought I'd have to preach this at church. We've got Christians who call themselves Christians doing the exact same thing that the world's doing. Mm. And they want both of them. I'm a Christian on Sunday, but I live like hell on Monday. I'm going to preach it if I like it or not. I'm just telling y'all, there's got to be a difference in a man and a woman and a youth group of Jesus Christ. There's, we can't be an ordinary little Southern Baptist church sitting on the highway saying, you know what? Oh, we're going to set up for two salvations. The Bible says, if you remain silent, you will be destroyed. Mm. Chew on that one for a little bit. Chew on that one a little bit. You know what that reminded me of? We will not listen or we will not walk in it. You know what that reminded me of? That reminded me, that same old evil spirit, that same old evil spirit that was in the, those days is the same old evil spirit that we fight with in these days. You know what this spirit's called? Y'all need to lean in. Teenagers, y'all need to listen to this one too. That's called rebellion. That's called rebellion. Everybody listen to me. That's called rebellion. In the book of Numbers, you know what the Bible, what God says that rebellion is? Witchcraft. I wonder how many people are here today are messing with some witchcraft. I know what God says. <laughs> here, come over, little mice. I know what God says, but I'm not doing it. I'm not listening to his word. I know God told me to be faithful to my spouse. I'm preaching better than y'all acting. Everybody else is doing it. I'm going to do it. I know what everybody else is going to vote. But I'm telling y'all in Jesus Christ's name, and this is a thus saith the word of Jesus Christ. Be careful because when you say, God, I'm not going to follow you. I'm not going to listen to you. No matter what, you've got a rebellious spirit on your heart and in your life right now. Hallelujah. Preacher, preacher, I think I will. Yeah, rebellious, 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 witchcraft, rich, witchcraft. Teenagers, I'm going to ask y'all something. Are you, are you obeying your parents? Come on, mom and dad. Y'all just sitting there going, whoa, y'all supposed to be saying, get them, preacher, get them, preacher. But we, we're hard on our teenagers. But watch this. Adults, are you obeying God? Are you faithful to his word? Are you faithful to his church? Are you faithful to his people? Woo! Hallelujah! Are you a tither? I'm trying. I'm just being honest. Listen to me, because listen to me. We think rebellion just comes with teenagers. But when you say, God, I know what your word says. 
but I'm not listening to it. I'm going to do what I want to do. I want to go where I want to go. I'm going to talk the way I want to talk. I'll treat my neighbor like I want to treat him. That's rebellion. I'm preaching good. It's rebellion. I Watch, I see more rebellion in Christians than I do lost people. Yeah. Lord, you got people at church. This side can't get along with this side. This side can't get along with this side. This side can't go this side. I'm mad at them. I'm I'm going to stay right here. Edmund Burke. Edmund Burke. He once said these words. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good people to do nothing. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good people to do nothing. When you see wrong, it's wrong. When you, listen, you know what I'm doing at this church now? Finally, after 13, coming on 13 years being your pastor? When I see a teenager disrespecting their mama, I call it out. Well, and if, if y'all, listen, I had one mama say, give me a high five, and she said, thank you. Because here's the deal. We, it takes a tribe. It takes a village. It takes men and women of God. I'm telling y'all, listen to me. I've got something on me right now. I'm telling you, I'm not going to back down off of. We, I'm telling you there's enough Christians in here right now to change South Central Kentucky. But the question is, do you want it? Do you? I want it. I refuse to anybody in here today to die and to go to hell. That bothers me that every 60 seconds three people die. That bothers me. And we have set back as a church. We have set back as a nation. We have set back as a community. And we talk about it. But faith without works is, we better, we better wake up. We better wake up. Listen, you know how <laughs> I wrote this down in my personal notes. Because the radical Muslims, they ain't asleep. The radical Muslims, they're not asleep. The satanic cults, <laughs> they're not asleep. The anti-God atheists, they're not asleep. So we as Christians, I'm telling y'all, I got a burr under my saddle this morning. You better wake up. Amen. We better, wa- Elkhorn, we better wake up. We better wake up. It's not time to sleep or to slumber. It's not. And I'm telling you, this election is one of the most pivotal elections that we've had in the history of the United States. And watch this, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm not doing it just for me and for you. I'm doing it for my children and my grandchildren. I'm gonna stand up, I'm gonna stand in the gap. You can't hurt my kids, you can't hurt my family. I'm gonna stand on the Word of God. And we gotta stand on the Word of God, hallelujah. We gotta do it. Wake up. Wake up, wake up. You say, Brian, settle down. No, get up, hallelujah. So tired saying we got the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit and we sat there more dead than a funeral home. No way. And I'm telling you, <laughs> God just feed me. Y'all work with Everybody say, I'm gonna work with you. Joel chapter two, Acts chapter two, says that in the last days. I firmly believe that Jesus Christ can come back here in just a moment. Are y'all ready? Are you, re- are you ready? Not because you're a Southern Baptist, not because you tithe, Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Not that you are a bad. I promise y'all, when you get to heaven, you're not going to say, God's going to say, what'd you do for me? Well, I was a Southern Baptist. He said, "Uh, you follow that line. Religion will send you straight to the pits of hell, but a relationship with Jesus Christ will turn your life around. It'll turn your life around. It'll turn your life around. And I'm just telling you, listen to me, the Muslims, the satanic cults, the anti-God atheists, they're not asleep. Why do y'all think 9-11 happened? They planned that. You know what they said? This is crazy. They said that they had been planning that for over 10 years. So you know what that tells me, Tracy? That right now while we're worshiping God, the radical Muslims are planning to kill us. Listen, we're not having vacation Bible school today. I'm telling y'all, listen to me. I'm, try- I'm sounding the alarm. I'm sounding these horn. I'm sounding the trumpet. Church, wake up. 
Wake up. Some of you are believing more in CNN and ABC and Fox News than you are the B-I-B-L-E. You better know the Bible. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and give y'all a, a, a free word right here. Donald Trump, listen to me, is not our savior. Joe Biden is not our savior. But Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords is our Savior. Can somebody get stand to your feet and open your mouth and throw your hands up in the air and say, I agree with you. I agree with you. Jesus is our Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Everybody say no more silence. Come on, no more silence. As for me in this house, come on. We're going to serve the Lord. Now give him a praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. Whew. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. Oh, it's a good spirit in this house today. And Elkhorn, I'm telling you, we've not seen anything yet. I'm telling you. We cannot just sit back and not do anything. Stand. When, when someone talks, educate them. Ed, like, for instance, you know, they always say there's a difference between church and, and state. How many of y'all have heard that one before? There's a difference between state and the church. What if I told you in 1802, that's where that lie come into place? I've studied, man. Y'all ain't going to get me on this stuff. <laughs> you know, you're not going to trump me on this stuff. 1802, that's where it changed. Because there was a man who wanted to change the rules and the responsibilities of the church. And he said, we'll take over that. There's got to be a separation. The, 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 here, let's settle down, Brian. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. They was trying to take the church out of the state. But here's the, pro, here's the deal. It's the church's responsibility. When God established the state, the government, the rules of the land, it was Biblical. It was biblical. And watch, here's the problem with the church. We're trying to separate our stuff from what God has established. Yeah. We got to start looking for, at everything. Listen to me, I'm almost finished. We got to start looking at everything from a biblical kingdom perspective. A biblical kingdom perspective. Listen to me. This is not a Demo Democrat thing. This is not a Republican thing. What if I told you this is a God thing? A God thing. What if I told you everything that God does, he does it with his kingdom in mind? Everything that Jesus Christ does, he does it with his kingdom in mind. Why do y'all think, I'm trying to teach really good today, that will be done on earth? Why do y'all think it's like that? Because God said, <laughs> he said, if you, everything that he does, when he made day one, kingdom in mind. Day two, kingdom in mind. Day three, kingdom in mind. Everything goes back and gives God the glory. Some of y'all think the birds are just chirping, but they're giving God glory. So, everything, everything gives God glory. Everything gives God glory. And God says, if y'all don't give me glory, I'll wake up a rock and a rock and I'll shout you. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So, this is a kingdom thing. Maybe this will make you think different when you go into that booth. How would God vote? How would God vote? You say, Brian, now right there, you done crossed the line. I'm ready for you. Talk to me after church. Because here's the deal. When God established government, Romans chapter 13, he put the church in responsibility. It's our, what if I told you, <laughs> this is our world, this is our, 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 this is where God has a state. He said, I'm going to give you the power to rule and to reign here on earth. I know this is a different sermon for some of you, because some of you are living a defeated life. But I'm telling y'all, greater is he that's in you. I'm telling you, we've got a spirit that lives in us. He's, I want you to rule, and I want you to reign. You don't have to take nothing off the enemy. I feel the Holy Ghost on this one. You don't have to listen to the enemy. Matter of fact, you put his head under your feet. 
I think it's time for the church just to have a celebration of heaven. I think it's time that if we got God in us like we say we do, we can rule, we can reign, we can take back this world. And mm, I feel that this morning. I feel that this morning. And listen, let me give you this for my note takers. God will not skip the church house to fix the White House. Huh. Now what you do? You know how I know what I'm preaching is truth and factual? Let me give you the four covenants that God established. God, not, not Southern Baptist, not Independent Baptist, not Missionary Baptist, not Pentecostal. Everybody thinks that Pentecostal is the closest one to God. He was a Jew. He was a Jew. He was a Jew. There's this old saying, I love this. There's an old Pentecostal preacher, his, one of his members come up to the pastor and they said these words. They said, I've never seen Jesus dance. I've never seen Jesus do all that speaking in tongues. I've never seen Jesus do all that. And I love the preacher's response. He said, but everybody he touched did. Yeah. He's in me. <laughs> he touched me. Hallelujah. I got the Holy Ghost in me. Yeah. Woo. Somebody, we going to stop right there and give God praise. If he has touched you. If you're born again, saved, and know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, come on, let's give God a high praise in here today. A high praise in here today. He's good. He's so good. Hallelujah. Woo. Allison, I'm not going to let a bar out shout me no more. I'm not going to let a lost man have a better life than what God's done for me. Come on, somebody. I got a home in heaven. I got streets of gold. Hallelujah. I got prosperity in my life. Come on, somebody. Uh, I'm just telling you. I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. You say, Brian, what do you do about that person over in Africa sleeping on a dirt floor? I got an answer for you. They're, they're more appreciative than some of you with a three bedroom, two bath. <laughs> Well, Brian, they got to walk wherever they go. That's why they're skinny. That's why America's obese. I'm going to stick up here. Let me wrap this up. Praise team, y'all come. Y'all know when I say that, right? I got two more. To say. Anyway, God will not skip the church house to fix the White House. God will not skip the church house to fix the White House. God will not skip the church house to fix the White House. The four covenants of God, these are so good. Listen to me. God first, Matthew 6, Seek ye first his kingdom, 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 kingdom. Seek ye first kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. Listen to me, seek ye first the kingdom. And all of his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto thee. That's what the Bible says. The first covenant he made, he said, if you seek me, you'll find me. The second thing, listen, I'm not going to stay on this long, was the family. <laughs> God established the family before he established the government. I'm going somewhere. And then the church. Listen, God, family, church, and number four is the government. The, the government was the last thing that God established. Check me out. Read your Bibles. It's so good. It's a good Bible study. God, family, church, government. God said these words, when, when you get the family right, listen to me, I'm trying to preach really good. Everybody thinks by drawing a, a, a check from the government's going to fix you. There are people that need assistance. But look at me, I'm going to really mess y'all up this morning. Where's Travis Begley at? Get ready. If you can work and God has given you health, go to work. 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 Now, I know, listen, I know, listen, I know how this is, but it's time. I wish I'd have had preaching like his. Because, man, I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost. 
God said, you put me first, watch. Take me to your family. You be faithful to church. Some of y'all are wanting the government to fix the family. Some of y'all, watch, I'm cool. Some of y'all want the church to fix your children. Daddies, y'all look at me. While I'm hammering, I'm going to hammer. Because the Bible even says this. It's so good God just gave this to me. That the word of God is like a hammer. That's right. And it's not Daryl Isaac. <laughs> ADHD, y'all. I, I, Sarah, that's just the way it is. <laughs> Thank you. That's my boy right there. That's my boy right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, he going to thank Heavy Hammer. He better know Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, well, let me get back over here. Um, so, the government, watch, let me, let, me, let me reverse this, okay? Listen to me. The government cannot fix the church. Amen. The church cannot fix your family. And the family is not the ruler of the covenant. Some of us are so out of order. I personally believe the church is out of order. I really do. And we are so blessed in here. So blessed in this house. But I'm telling you, listen to me. God first. Your family second. It is not the church's responsibility or the government's responsibility to fix the family. Watch. But number one can. If you get God right, it'll fix your family. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost on this one. You get the family right, it'll fix the church house. Hallelujah. And then the church house will go to the White House. It's so true. God, family, church, government. God, family, church, government. Here's what I'm going to get in your spirit this morning. Here, y'all ready? We must pray for God to heal our land. Second Chronicles 7, 14, y'all. We got to pray. But listen to me. Here's what I'm asking us to do. A step farther. Because I'm a teacher, preacher, and I got to get this in your spirit. Yes, pray. Yes, pray. Pray this Tuesday. The election's coming up. Pray, pray. But here's what I'm asking us to do. We must also partner with God for the healing of our land. Don't just pray, but partner. Y'all got me? Don't just pray about it, but partner with God. And here's what I'm asking us to do. Y'all ready? Make it personal. God, what do you need me to do to partner with you to help heal this land? He may say, I need you to be a witness at your work. I need you to worship me while you've got breath in your lungs. I don't need you to be a, a pretender. I need you to be a contender. I don't need you to be a spectator. I need you to be a participator. And I'm just telling you what I felt in my heart. And I'm, I'm, I'm done. This is it. Proverbs, write this down, note takers. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. I love this. Man, when I found this in the Bible Friday in my study, I about come unglued. Proverbs 14, 34. If you're with me, say I'm with you. Come on, if you're with me, say I'm with you. Listen to me. The Bible says, righteousness exalts the nation. But sin and silence condemns any people. I'm going to read it again. How in the world, Brian, do we change this nation by right living? You know the problem? I understand this. I talk to people every day of my life. And here's the number one thing they say, Allison. Man, and y'all have heard this before too. There's no difference in the church than there is the world. How many of y'all have heard this one before? Man, I'm just as good a person as they are. I just seen them in the bar Friday night. Man, they're cheating on their spouse. They voted for abortion. Righteousness exalts a nation. How do we change a nation? By right living. <laughs> by living right. By doing good. He said these words, Elkhorn, I'm going to make it personal. You're at a crossroads. We're at a crossroads. I'll never tell you to vote Republican. I'll never tell you to vote Democrat. I'll tell you to vote Bible. Vote Bible. Vote Bible. And now the two candidates, who's living the closest to the Word of God? 
So, here it is. Right living, morals, kingdom principles, core values, holiness will exalt a nation. But sin, listen, but sin and silence will condemn any people, any people. So may God bless America. Tuesday, November the 3rd. May we see righteousness back in this nation. May we stand up for what's right. May we quit being wishy-washy on our beliefs and our doctrines and how we stand. May we always be a nation that will stand together and fight together and live together and love together and give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. We get one chance down here and let's go out with a hallelujah anyhow. Amen? Let's do it for God one last time. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this altar call simple. This altar call simple. Number one, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please, 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 please do not walk out of this church lost. It bothers me. I look at the obituaries every day of my life. It bothers me that people just don't care no more. It bothers me that we got churches today that can't even get along. It bothers me. It bothers me how people say they, they're in love with God, but they're silent. They're not saying anything. I hear this all the time. Well, it's not my business. What if I told you Ezekiel proves you wrong? The Bible says their blood is on your hands. He says you be a watchman. Friend, if I seen a house on fire, I promise you I would. And I'd probably ask for a suit first. Maybe, I don't know. But if I seen somebody getting ready to be burnt to death, and if I had the strength in me to go, I would rescue them. I would not stand on the side of the house and say, somebody get them. Somebody get them. They're going to die. That's my family member. No. I don't care who you are in here today. If your house was on fire, I would try to rescue you. And the church has the greatest answer of mankind. And we're just sitting back. Go get them, preacher. Go get them, Sunday school teachers. Go get them, deacons. And you're just sitting back. And you're watching your family. You're watching people not be rescued. I feel the Holy Ghost. It's time. It's time to stand up and to plunder hell and to populate heaven. Today may be my last sermon, but I'm going to go out with a shout. I love every one of you with all my heart. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please don't think that because you're a good person, you're going to go to heaven. There's good people in hell burning right now. If you want Jesus, number one, I want you to come to this altar. You say, Brian, I'm going to wait for everybody to close their eyes. No, if God's talking to you, if God is talking to you, if God is whispering your name, if your heart is beating fast, I'm going to ask you to get up right now, right now in Jesus Christ's name, and I want you to come to this altar. Come on. I want you to, if God is dealing with you, if you want to be rescued today, I'm going to ask you to come to this altar. You say, Brian, what if people are watching? I would rather watch people, people watch me come to know Jesus than people watch me turn away from Jesus. Woo! Does anybody in here need a Savior? I'm serious today, man. My whole ministry's changing. Perry, I love God more today <laughs> than I ever have. I believe what I'm preaching, Allison, that today may be, you listen to me, I know y'all think you're going to grow to be old and wrinkled and this, that, and the other. In one year, I buried five teenagers in one year. You say, Brian, you're trying to scare us? No. 
I'm trying to preach truth to you today. Jesus Christ is coming. Don't just stand back and watch somebody's house burn. Their life just get away with everything. It's time to be the watchman. It's time to sound the alarm. It's time to say, God, give me a soul. So in Jesus Christ's name, the second part is this. This, this Tuesday, everybody should come to the altar today. And you may want to make your, your chair an altar. But Tuesday's going to be a pivotal, 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 pivotal day in the, in the life of your children, your grandchildren, and you, in this church, in our community. I'll never tell you how to vote. But my prayer before you leave here today, you'll know in your heart which way you're going. This altar is open for salvation and prayer. So in Jesus Christ's name, you stand. Father God, God, I love these people. I thank you for their lives. There's some amazing people in this church, God. And God, I openly say, God, forgive us for being silent. Forgive us for not speaking up. God, forgive us. And Lord, I pray from the front to the back, side to side, top to bottom, that right now, God, that Lord, you start invading our, our privacy. God, pull us to this altar. Let us love one another. Let us pray for one another. Let us stand with one another. May this church never be an ordinary church sitting on the side of the highway. God, I pray this prayer believing that God, the atmosphere is changing. Hallelujah. And you're speaking. Draw your people. Save somebody here today. Amen. Save somebody here today, God. Save somebody here today. In Jesus' name. And all God's people say it. I love you, Elkhorn. Let's come to this altar. If you need salvation or if you just want to pray, or watch this, if you want to repent, this is a safe place. Amen. To God be the glory. Let's fill this altar up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.